Let's face it, nobody likes watching that spinning wheel of death waiting for a website to load. It's like waiting around for your coffee to brew in the morning without the payoff of the coffee or the sweet aroma of caffeine. Slow websites are the ultimate party pooper and they send your visitors running for the hills and Google doesn't like that. Framer is amazing because it allows designers and non-developer types to create amazing and beautiful websites, but you still need to optimize it, otherwise it's all for naught. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top five tips for speeding up and optimizing your framer websites and turning them from that ridiculous slow sloth creature that you've created into a fast cheetah website experience. Okay, that cheetah analogy was not great, but they're gonna be fast. All right, first up, you need to know how to test your website to see if it's optimized or not. And still to this day, Google's Page Speed Insights is probably the best. It's my go-to. So I'm gonna head over to my website. I'm gonna grab the URL and I'm gonna paste it in there and I'm gonna go ahead and analyze. And what you're looking for is yellow and preferably green results. When it's done analyzing, it's gonna give you scores in four areas. SEO, best practices, accessibility, and performance. You can see my performance is at 81% which is not bad. Now, but honestly, it, it could be better. Notice here that it's giving you your readings for mobile. And if we click over to desktop, it's gonna give you different readings. So you can see on desktop, I'm getting a performance of 91, which is actually pretty dope. Now, without jumping into all the details about first contentful paint and largest contentful paint, you actually don't need to know about those. If you just follow the tips that I'm gonna show you, you're gonna up your score regardless. And that's all you're here for is progression, not perfection just do better. So with that being said, let's dive into these five tips to improve the speeds of your framer websites. The thing that's gonna make the most impact on your website's performance is actually the images. If you'll optimize all imagery on your website, you will see instantaneous improvement of your website speed. When I think about optimizing images, I think about it in three steps or three questions. Is it the right format? Is it the right size? And does it have the right compression? Let's look at an example on my website. As I scroll down, there's lots of images here. And when I click inside of these, there's probably even more images showcasing these different portfolio pieces. I need to ask myself the question, is it the right size? Is it the right format? Does it have the right compression? Well, if we go and we look at these images, here is the original on the left-hand side. It's a JPEG and it was sitting at about 1.4 megabytes. And when I uploaded this image to Framer, it converted it for me to the AVIF format and it compressed it down to 115 kilobytes. Now that might seem pretty good, but the truth is that if this image would have been smaller from the start, it would have been even smaller when it got converted. Really thankful that Framer makes this AVIF conversion because the compression is great, the quality is great, and it's gonna save you a bunch of bandwidth and improve your performance out of the box with Framer. But we can do a better job ourselves. So I've opened up Figma and I've uploaded that original here. You'll notice that when I uploaded it, it's sitting at 1,261 pixels wide by 903. The first one is, is it the correct size? This is probably already too big. I don't need it almost ever on my website to be 1,200 pixels wide. So I'm just gonna shrink this image down to something like 825, and now I've made it much smaller from the start. Second question, is it the right format? Well, we've reduced the size, but now we need to export it in the right format. And that begs the question, what is the right format? Well, for an image like this, JPEG is gonna be great because I don't need transparency. If I need transparency, I'll probably need a PNG but we have to weigh the costs and the benefits of that because they're gonna be a heavier image. If it's something like a simple vector-based logo or icon, that could get exported out as SVG because that's even smaller. For us, JPEG's gonna work. So I'm gonna select the image. I'm gonna export it as a JPEG at one time. I'll drop that directly on my desktop and I'll get ready for step three, which is compression. Now, like I said, Framer is going to compress and convert this image into the AVIF format, which is super nice, but we can do a little bit more work on our end to make it even better. We can use an image compressor. You can find one online for free at tinypng.com. Although I tend to still use Image Optum. In my opinion, it's still the best. So let's open up Image Optum. You can see we have that image that we exported and it is currently sitting at 229 kilobytes, which again is way better than 1.4 megabytes, but let's take that 229 kilobyte 
image and drag it into image optum and you'll see that we just saved 17.7 percent it overrode our image and now it's sitting at 188 kilobytes now what did it do it compressed it slightly it's lossless compression it removed all the metadata and garbage out of it a lot of information that you're not going to see anyways and it's already made our image that much better let's go ahead and upload our new compressed version into framer we'll replace the old one adding that image that conversion has taken place We'll go ahead and press publish and then we'll pull down our new version and see what size we get from AVIF. All right, and the results are in. Our original image that we started with was 1.4 megabytes. We uploaded it to Framer the first time and it was at 115. We optimized, we made sure it was the right size and compressed things using Image Optum, re uploaded it to Framer, and this time we're sitting at 43 kilobytes. This is going to make our site so much faster when we do it at scale with every image. If you thought images were bogging down your website, wait till we talk about your videos. Yeah, I'm talking to you, irresponsible video uploader person. In all seriousness, Framer does a pretty decent job at trying to optimize videos for you. It'll actually lazy load videos and it'll stop playback when those videos are outside of the viewport, which saves you a lot of bandwidth. But we still have to do a little bit of work to make sure it's the right size, it's the right format, and it's compressed correctly. First off, ask yourself the question, does this video need to live directly on the website or can it be embedded from a third-party platform like YouTube or Vimeo? Obviously, video that's embedded directly in your website is going to require more bandwidth. It's going to be heavier. Notice here on my website, I have a little two second looping video of myself. It's very, very small in size, but it's important to me because it makes people feel like I'm actually talking. This is what I do for a living. I talk about design. And so I want people to get that same experience on the website. Now compare this to a different page on my website. When you scroll down, you can see an embedded version of a YouTube video. Why? Because I don't want this page to load slowly. I want people to be able to take in all of the content and the information that's there, but still see an example of a video. This is a bit of a balancing act and only you can answer this question on what's right for each individual website. Also, make sure that your videos are the right format and they're as compressed as they can be. The same rules that apply to images also apply to videos. Make sure that it's the right format and that it's compressed as much as it can be. Don't load an 8K.mov file up to your website and expect your website to load in a snappy way. Export your videos out in a way that balances that compression and the size of the video with the quality, and then consider running it through some sort of resizing or compression tool. You can do that for free at using Adobe Express or over at v.io. Simply upload your video, it'll compress it, make it a little bit smaller and a little bit more manageable. Be careful with tickers, slideshows, and carousels. They are so easy to implement inside of Framer by inserting, going to interactive, and dropping one of these amazing pieces of functionality into your website. Notice the ticker running here on this website, or I have multiple tickers running on my agency website. These look super impressive and they don't require all the code that they used to, but they are heavy and they take a lot of bandwidth to operate. You'll notice that the more of these items that you add to your site, that the more your site will slow down and the worse the performance will be. This is the same for iframe embeds or spline 3D objects or Unicorn Studio. Loading your website full of all these interactive elements is gonna slow down the performance drastically. The solution here is to find the right balance. Here on my website, I used to have three rows of these tickers running to show all of this cool work. I dropped it down to two. So reducing, minimizing, being a little bit more selective with your animations, tickers, slideshows, and carousels, it's gonna go a long way. One of the sneakiest little enemies of performance for your websites, and not just framer websites, mind you, but any site on the web is gonna be blurs and shadows. Rendering a lot of different drop shadows with very specific properties or blurs with glass morphic textures and styles is going to make the DOM render a lot slower. And so you have to be a bit more selective when and where you apply them. I have drop shadows on my website. You can see these testimonial cards have some slight drop shadows. These chips right here have drop shadows. These other cards, there are drop shadows and some blurs on my website, but you have to be selective. So pick and choose. Don't necessarily allow this rule to dictate your design style, but do understand that the medium in which we design for, those designs are viewed 
using bandwidth, using internet speed, using data. So just like a print designer needs to keep paper stock and weight and texture of paper in mind when they're designing a poster, we as web designers need to keep the browser in mind and the limitations there. So again, don't let it dictate your style, but definitely consider it. Last tip of the day is to reduce the DOM. DOM stands for the Document Object Model, and it's the way that modern browsers actually render all of your beautiful web designs onto the screen. Every piece of typography, every headline, every image, every icon, every card, the DOM has to render it all from top to bottom. Therefore, the more things that you have, the longer it's going to take and the harder the browser has to work, that's gonna make your website slow. Now, Framer has done something amazing, which is to abstract that front-end development layer away from us so we just get to do the fun design work and websites are built. But just because it's abstracted away and it's out of sight and out of mind doesn't mean that you and I don't have to think about it or respect it. So here's my favorite tips on reducing the DOM when you're building Framer websites. Tip number one is to build smaller pages. We've gotten into this habit in modern web design to make super long, super scrollable pages, but the browser has to render everything from top to bottom. So the more that you feed it, the longer it's going to take to chew. Consider breaking out pieces of individual pages to create new pages. I know one pagers are really cool, but it's also still cool to have websites with multiple pages. You should, you should try it out. It's not bad. Number two, less animations. And this is like a knife in the back because Framer makes animations so easy and they're so interesting that we just load our websites full of them. But every animation, every effect that you add, again, slows down your website. So use them sparingly. And lastly, try to have less nested groups inside of Framer. Let's take a look at our website here. You can see a section like this in our layers panel when we open it up. Here's a ticker section that has a group or stack inside and it has an element. This is super easy for the browser to render. But if we were to open up a section like this that has a section or a stack inside of it and a stack inside of that, a stack inside of that, and a stack inside of that, and a stack inside of that, the browser has to render each and every one of those stacks. So although the layers panel and framer might just look like 10 layers from top to bottom, it might actually be something like 1200 or 1300 layers. This requires us to build websites inside of framer with a little bit more intentionality instead of just throwing everything inside of stacks and more groups and more groups that's actually making the browser work harder and it doesn't want to work that hard. If you put all these tips together, if you do each and every one of them, you are going to have high performing websites. Mix that with Framer's ability to make websites fast and beautiful and you're going to be hitting website home runs every single time. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and check the description for a bunch of helpful links as well as a link over to Design Champs where you can learn more about Framer development and website building building just like this video, but way more. Sign up. It's free to do so. It's a place where designers and developers are coming to learn and up-level their skills. I hope you're having an amazing week. Hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and keeping things snappy. We'll see you in the next one.